In this video, I'm going to talk about one of my favorite fabric features, and it's called semantic link. Very often, data engineers create data which is consumed by two different groups, data analysts and data scientists. And oftentimes, they might create the same metrics and analyze data using the same metrics, but with two different definitions. Semantic link is a feature where fabric will allow a data scientist to read back data that's been modeled in Power BI, for example, and pull in calculations that have already been designed in DAX, and they might be very complex, but they're sitting right there. So the data science can then bring those metrics into a data model in Pandas and do further data science work on that. So I'm going to actually walk through how to do that. So I'm going to take some data out of a Power BI workbook into a Pandas data frame. I'm going to use scikit-learn to do some machine learning models on that and then save those back to the Fabric workspace where I can then use it to potentially put it back into Power BI. So let's get into it. Okay, let's get started. In this video, we're gonna read data from a Power BI dashboard back into a Pandas data frame and do some predictive analytics on that, uh, create a regression model to predict total sales, and then write that model back to the model store in Fabric. So here's what the dashboard looks like now. First, I'm going to switch to the data science experience, and I can see here I have some links to notebooks. And usually what I would do is create a new notebook here, and then I'd start adding my Python work in here. But to save time for the demo, I've already created a notebook. Rather than typing out this notebook step by step, what I'm going to do is walk you through the notebook when it's, as it's finished, and we'll run every step and see together how we actually go about grabbing the Power BI data, creating a predictive analytics model with it, and then saving that model back to the Fabric model registry. So the first step is we need to bring in the semantic link libraries, and this is what Python will use to access the semantic models that are stored within Fabric. So I'll run that cell. And those libraries are installed, so the next thing we'll do is import dependencies. So in order to call routines from SDKs, we need to import them. So I have a few sections I've broken these into. Um, one is just basic pandas and numpy, which we would use almost no matter what uh, infrastructure we're creating this notebook for. Uh, the next thing would be importing the, the uh, senpai uh, fabric functions that we'll be using, and then we'll import the machine learning, and this is mainly scikit-learn, uh, matplotlib, seaborn. So these aren't uh, fabric specific. These are these are libraries we would use, you know, even with a local notebook. So at this point, all of our libraries are imported, and we can get to work on the data. So the first thing we'll do is list out the data sets we have access to in Fabric. And here we have Harbor House, which is the name of the lake house. So this is created kind of by default when you create a lake house. The second two are Power BI PBIX files that I have in my workspace. The one I'm going to work with is this one called Retail Analysis. So down here, I'm just going to set that to a variable Retail Analysis. I'm going to give this an experiment name. This will come into play when we create the predictive analytics model. It'll be logged into the Fabric infrastructure under this experiment. So these are just some assignments, so they'll be very quick. And the next thing we'll do is actually look at the data set and see what's in it. So here we have kind of a visual model that we have a sales measure group. We have items stored, districts, and times. So it gives us just kind of a validation that we're looking at the right thing. And then we can look at the measures that are in the data. So all of these are, and you might recognize the DAX here, that these are measure expressions within the Power BI file. So we have sales uh, uh, table, has count of open date, open store date, total stores, and so on. So the measure we're going to try to predict is total sales, which is here. And total sales is actually a combination of some other measures that were created within the Power BI file. And we'll just be pulling out the final file along with some other driver fields to feed into the model training. And in the next cell, I'm going to actually pull the data out of the Power BI model into a pandas data frame. So I'm going to bring in a couple, only a couple measures. Those total sales is going to be my predicted measure. I'm going to use average unit price as, as one of the predictor or independent variables into the regression training. All these other fields I'll use uh, as part of the regression training as well. So let's run that query and see what data we're actually going to get. So we pull the data, put it into a pandas data frame. This is what the frame has in it. I have name, month, store type, and so on and so on. So these aren't in the same format that I actually want for training a machine learning model. I'd rather have these as more numeric columns 
that can be um, more easily processed into machine learning. So I'm going to change those, but first I'm just going to look at a couple other statistics. So I have a hundred rows, in other words, a hundred stores, nine columns. That makes sense. Those are nine columns. And if I describe the stats a little bit, the mean of the average unit price is 626. 25 percentile and the max the maximum is 784 and then total sales so this just gives me kind of a idea of the spread of the data and then here i'm just going to look at the store type is same store or new store the chain is fashions or Lindsay's. i'm going to turn these into numeric uh, uh, columns in order to look at them so i'll assign the total sales column to my predicted array and i'll use get dummies to convert these categorical values into individual columns by value so in the end, I have a data set that looks a little more like this. And if I look at what columns I'm left with, okay, so territory, Kentucky, so these are all true or false. And then I can see a couple of columns I don't want anymore. So name, open month, total sales. Uh, total sales is the predicted value. I don't want that in my X, in my independent um, array set. And then open month and name don't make any sense. I'm, we're, we're not going to try to uh, predict sales based on the the month in the past that the store opened. So I'm just going to remove these columns from the data frame. And then if I look at what I'm left with, I have all of these, all of these columns, the district open year, is it a same store or not? What territory it's in? These will all be uh, inputs to my regression model. Now we'll do the actual training and using auto log, we'll be able to take the results of the experiment and log them into fabric so that we can look at the results later and also we'll have the model so that we can publish it if we like it. So we'll do a linear regression model um, with uh, multiple dimensions and we will go ahead and get the prediction. Okay, so our training is complete and we actually did a prediction on our, our Y hat so we can do some, some measurements. So we'll take a look and see how what the accuracy of that model is. Um, we got 0.89. That seems like a pretty close, that's a pretty good number. And I'm going to actually dot distribution plot that out so I can see how close this model fit my data. This plot's complete, and I just wanted to look at how closely the model is fitting the data, which the, the blue color is the fitted values and the red color is the actual values. So we can see that the model fits most of the data pretty pretty well, just about $900,000 in sales here. Um, we're a little bit off, so we might wanna work this model a little bit more, but it's good enough for the purposes of this demo. So what we just did is to import some libraries. We looked at what data we had available within the workspace that we could pull from Power BI. We wanted retail analysis, so we pulled that data in and looked, took a look at it and it looked like the right data. So we looked at what measures we had. So here are the DAX measures within the Power BI file. Those looked good. And then we queried for that data and pulled out the calculation of total sales along with the calculation of unit price and some categorical data that we could use to predict the total sales. Looked at the data a little bit more, did a little bit of wrangling, wound up with an input data set that looked like that. And then we trained the model. We used Autolog to log the training data into the Fabric workspace. And then we took a peek at how closely the model fit the data and it fit it pretty well. So now we'll go back to the workspace and see where that model landed. And we can see here's the experiment that was run. We'll skip that. And here MLflow has actually logged out that R2 score that I looked at within the workbook, as well as other statistics. And it's telling us what the input schema looks like, so that if we want to incorporate this model somewhere else, we can see it. And if we like that model, we can actually go ahead and save that into model registry. So we're going to select, create a new model, put it in the model folder, give it a new name, and I'll call this my production retail oops, prediction model. So that's saved into the model registry, and I could go ahead and take that model and export it and deploy it somewhere else. I could even download that model and grab the model file along with its associated metadata and upload that to another system and deploy it in a Kubernetes cluster to enable predictions by other applications. So that's it. I hope that was interesting, or at least you learned something from it. I'll see you next time.